Hello YouTube and welcome to a new tutorial. So just last week or a couple of days ago depending when you see this or a bit back I don't know but before this I released a tutorial about Java and I showed you how to install or download and install everything you need for Eclipse and that worked perfectly but then I've always sort of been thinking you a big part of Unity if you don't know I do Unity tutorials is C sharp and C sharp is a really good language to know. I won't be teaching Unity C sharp, but I'll be teaching C sharp using Visual Studio. Now, if you've never heard of Visual Studio, this is Visual Studio. So that's not a best thing, but you can see we've got the windows up here, and you literally drag and drop tools on, and then you program them to do stuff. So we'll be learning this, but I'll be showing you how to download this. Now the funny thing is, we won't be downloading the latest version of it. The latest version is 2013, and the one we're looking at now is 2010, 2010, date-wise. That's how applications work. And it, I just like it a lot better than the new one, which if we click the new one, as you can see, is a bit more... It's metro-themed, so it's in your face, everything's in bold. I just don't like it. There's not that many changes between them. Um, there is, of course, programming changes and everything, but the 2010 version still works 100% perfect. If you want the 2013 version, go ahead, it'll work the exact same, but I'm going to go and get this 2.10 version. So if you go to Google and type in Visual Studio 2.0 and then your number and then Express. In this case, Express means free. So just click that and you'll see the top link is by Microsoft.com, Visual Studio, la da 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 So click the top one, Visual 2.0. Or whatever products, and when that loads, you'll see that it loads here, and you can see it. But basically, shows us how to download um, the current one, 2012, or you can scroll down and get more. It's up to you. I'm simply going to choose download Visual Studio 2.10 Express Previous. So we click that. And you'll see it'll drag us all the way down to the 2010 downloads. So you see, we've got lots of downloads here. And most of you will think we'll just go straight for the C-sharp one. But I I, hmm, urge you not to. If you want to actually get into programming, yes, you do want C-sharp. But C++, if you don't know where it is, it's a higher level language. It can do more. It's more used in the gaming world. Visual Basic is a really good way to start out if you want. If you want to develop webs, you need web develop well websites. And there's different ones you can choose from. So I do urge you to get the all in one ISO. That's the one I downloaded, but if you want the C sharp one just go and download it. So I'm gonna click it and you'll see there it comes down and blah 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 blah. You can read it all. Choose your download language. I'm gonna choose English because I'm not speaking any other right now. And just click the download button. And you'll see it'll begin downloading. It's a large-ish file, I'm not going to lie. So we can cancel that there. So when that's downloaded, you'll see we have this file here, VS2 whatever Express 1. And you'll see it's a disk image file type. And it's a bit an unusual file type compared to normal. Now there's two options you can actually use in order to do it. You can, one, burn it to a disk. I'm not going to do that. It seems a bit of a waste of a disk for something that's released every year and I may change, I don't know. So I'm actually going to show you another way to emulate it if you wish. So I'll go to Google and type in Daemon Tools. It's got, it's weirdly spelled at the beginning, so if you're not English, American, British or anything, you'll think it's a bit weird, but it's spelled D-A-E-MON. De Daemon. I call it Demon Tools myself, I'm pretty sure most people do. And if you just type in Demon Tools, like so, um, links in the description for all this. Click the top one, it should be downloads. It's a really good program, and I'll show you what this does after. So, what you can do is if you can see, it obviously chucks the buy ones at the top, they've got to make money. But if you scroll down, all the way down to Demon Tools Lite here, you've got two options Mac and um, Windows. Linux doesn't have an option simply because Linux already comes with one built in. But what you can do is choose a download free one here. Um, you only want the Demon Tools Lite, that's all you need. So if you click download, it'll take you to another page here. And all you're going to do is click this small download button right at the top. So click that. 
and you'll see that I'll begin downloading but I've already got it again so I can cross those off and we're all sorted so if I cross those off the first thing we're going to do is install DT Lite which is Demon Tools Lite so if you double click it it'll load up just click yes if you're on Windows if you're on Mac I don't know how you install it just go along with it this should work for Windows XP, Vista, 7 all of them I've used it on all probably nothing before Windows 98 but yeah so first language just click well first screen click next you can read that if you like um, like I said if you like then click agree um, you've got to choose the free license otherwise you'll get charged for it and um, we're only going to be using it for free one you don't need technical support you've got me so just click next it'll do that weird screen then it'll come up with this um, STPD you don't need I'm not going to go into explaining what it is but basically it just allows you to emulate more CD drive type of things you don't need the Windows gadget and you don't really need the file associations or the desktop shortcut so you can just cross all those off I recommend you keeping the start menu shortcuts on because that's these things in here it adds it to these things here so you need them so just click next and then it'll, then it'll say would you like to get this just click skip it'll offer you another one just click skip and then click don't mount it use it basically it'll upload whatever you do to demon tools and let them record what you do if you want them to record what you do just click allow it helps them improve then you click that you can see where it installs it click install so what demon tools does is it creates something called a virtual drive which is right there and what it basically does is you can download these files here called ISO file types you can also call them CD images or disk images and all this is is an exact replica except the copyright issues of a disk but in this case it's legal of course and Ubuntu is another popular one used for ISOs too and you'll see it'll start doing stuff don't worry about it and what this software will do is when you insert an ISO to it it'll make your computer think that it's got a disk in with this ISO on even though it hasn't so when we go to my computer you will see that it will put another drive here I think that's the one actually yes that may be the one in a minute yeah there we go so that's the one you if we just click run close it'll open it up and if it doesn't create one here that is the one but there's the fake drive don't worry about that one just it's just saying about demon tools don't worry so we've got the box here perfect so you can see this one is our virtual drive now you can't eject this drive I mean you could click it and click eject but it won't do anything to your computer we have to import it so if you get this screen here you'll see image catalog no image images added so we're going to grab our image our disk image and drag it on click and you'll see there it is so if you just come down here and it'll say there is no description don't worry about it and click this big shiny mount button and what this has basically done is basically pretended and told your computer there's a disk being inserted with this ISO so it's like oh yes here's your disk so let's click run setup so you'll see it'll show all this stuff here and it'll basically say which one do you want to install first well I'm gonna do this one but I will eventually put all these ones in to show you so I'm gonna click C sharp and do you want blah 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 just click yes and it'll start copying them so I'm gonna click pause every time it comes to a, a long loading screen to save boring, boring you but I will show you every new screen so this first one, do you want to send your stuff to Microsoft? Nobody does it, just honestly click no, it doesn't, they do, probably don't even pay attention to it. But yeah, look at Windows 8. But yeah, if you click I have read and accept it, um, you read it if you really want to. Click next, it's not like the South Park episode or anything. Um, Silverlight is good for a browser thing, which only pretty much only Microsoft uses, so I don't install it. An SQL Server is a good thing to have for the future when you start using databases, so I highly recommend you install it. If you're on 64-bit, it will offer you the X64. Remember from if you watch my Java tutorial, X86 and X32 is the same thing. If you don't see 64-bit, don't worry about it. If you see both, go ahead and install it. It stops any issues future down the line. Click next. And you'll see it'll install all these. Yes, Microsoft is known for installing loads of stuff, but you will be able to technically use all of these. This one, Net Framework, it'll install automatic. It will basically update because you've already got it. And some of these I could read out to you and tell you, but some of them are a bit self-explanatory. So, if you don't know what SQL is or a database is, a database is a massive 
folder if you like which you can store online or offline and it basically stores loads of details so when you go to the hospital or online and create a, an account or log in go to hospital it re keeps a record of your presence in a database which you can access and SQL is a type of database it stands for SQL there's also MySQL and SQL or Microsoft SQL don't worry about it, we'll go into the future. But while this is installing, I'll just skip to the end. So, back in a minute. So, this screen just popped up and it says you need to restart your computer to complete the installation. The reason it's doing this and it didn't do anything else is because since it's a Microsoft product, it's literally editing your operating system if you're on it. So, you do need, kind of need to restart. So, I'm going to click this restart button, I'll be back in a minute. Slowly logging back in. So you'll see, as soon as I'm on, it's continuing the installation instantly, so just let it go along with it. So it popped up with the box, and it's going to continue installing it. So you shouldn't have to restart again. It's been a while since I've actually installed this, but to my knowledge, you don't. So Help Viewer is simply gives you help. You can't, I mean, you can't tell it not to install, you know what Microsoft's like, but you don't really need it. All it is is you press F12 on a keyword and it tries poorly to tell you where it is because the help documents are hard to follow. Visual Studio Entity Framework just basically gives you the tools you need. SQL Server, 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 that's all for programming in SQL. It's not hard. Uh, C Sharp, obvious that's what we're doing. Net Framework is in order what you need to in use C Sharp windows based applications and the rest is error reporting and visual I can't remember that one I apologize so we'll wait till this is done so after that long period of time we can finally see it has been installed so if we click exit that's pretty much it it's all done but I'm not gonna just leave you that's it you've got to wait now I'm not gonna do that I'm gonna show you how to basically set yourself up and begin using it but I'm not going to teach you any code this time so if you go start and then all programs and try and find Visual Studio Express and click Microsoft Visual C Sharp so a value and page is open um, you may have to register your account it's really simple they give you a link you click it you put your email address and it gives you a link done you don't have to pay for it I promise so I'll come back when this is done so that's now done it just went off and you can see we are loaded so it'll come up help make visual studio better and no thank you so basics we've got solution explorer which is project explorer but basically lets you see whatever's in your project and um, you've got your main screen here easy enough and then you've got your toolbox if you just click it and I'm going to take this little pinhead here and it'll stick there. So what I like to do is grab Solution Explorer and I just like to put it on top of Toolbox. So all you do is switch them there. Simple enough. So you'll see it when we've got no Toolbox. So let's create a project. So I'm going to go New Project and open it if you've already got one. And you've got many different projects. So make sure you select C Sharp at the side if you've installed the other ones. And I'm going to click Windows Forms Application. Quick rundown. Windows Forms application creates a window for you and says off you go. WPF, I'm not 100% sure. Um, empty project creates you a completely blank project. It basically creates a folder and says here, create yourself. Console application creates a CMD application. Just click Forms application and we'll call it YouTube Test App. Of course, that went horribly wrong. YouTube Test App and click OK. So it'll load and configure everything. And as you can now see, we have a form. Basic controls, as you can see the dots around the form, let's extend it. You cannot move this form, you cannot cross it off. It is just a display. If you double click it like I accidentally did, it'll take it to the code. So there's the basic code so far. That isn't all the code, there is more code, of course. So, if you click your toolbox, you can see you now have a lot of tools. But what I like to do is turn up, close all these folders, so just close, 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 close and I'm going to open up all Windows Forms and then you get everything. So I'm going to drag a button on, we now have a button. Easy enough. I'm going to find a label and if you've programmed in Unity you will know how much of a big time saver this is. So I'm going to come down and we'll find a text box. 
because they're the most common ones text box so we now have a label text box and a button so if I just click this button you can right click on it and choose properties and I'm going to pin head this up again so that should be automatically stay there and if you click your button you get lots of different properties all these properties so I'm going to change the text of it which is what it says to um, submit there we are put a capital S on submit easy and if we go up we can give it a name so it, so when you're coding it you'll type button 1 I don't want it to say button 1 so instead we'll just say submit button there we are it doesn't change it but that's what it says and you can do this for everything so we could change what the text box says or we can change what it defaultly starts off with so we'll say type here dot 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 and then the label will just say welcome to my form so you can change the forms one as well so if we go to click the form make sure you don't double click just single click change the text to YouTube app simple right and I'm gonna let you leave it at that so if you want to use something simply double click it and you'll be in the code I'll explain the code in a future tutorial but that's what I'm gonna do for now really really basics have a go at the dragging and dropping if you click the green button you will run it so it won't do anything of course you can turn it around move it blah 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 submit type it does stuff it's cool you can extend it you can minimize it get rid it works so just play around with it play with some features if you want to go at coding have a go a tutorial should be up after this if not look up the well just look up a tutorial it's really really simple so we will be covering majority of these tools some of them we won't quick tip pointer is not a tool it's simply your mouse so if you've got a button selected and you don't want it click the pointer that's it there's your first one so you've learnt four today checkbox you should all know it's a checkbox check grid you've also got if I scroll down progress bar some of you may not know but this is what you load with so if I change the value to 10 you can see it fills up change it to 100 it fills up progress bar simple and you've got lots of different ones to use um, don't worry about all those ones at the bottom what I closed it just includes them in here and you can add more this this is a really good program so I hope you liked it please thumbs up because it really helps if you do if you didn't like something comment below all the links in are in the description please join my Facebook Twitter if you like you don't have to this often cool little stuff on there which I don't post on YouTube thank you for watching and I'll see you next time